Um, good morning, everyone, and thank you for inviting us along today. Um, 16 Days of Action is always busy for everybody, so I'm really glad you're, um, you're all here. Um, can we go on the next slide, please? Um, I'm from Wise Women. We are a unique voluntary sector organisation in Glasgow. Um, we have a feminist approach to personal safety for women in the city and beyond. Um, and we can say that now because Glasgow has now declared itself the first feminist city in the UK, which is helpful for us. Um, we were established in 1994 and uh, we started off personal safety workshops um, and courses for women um, because women were often didn't have the language to use around about violence against women at that point um, and they were more comfortable talking about their public safety. So we, um, wise women, um, gave women events and courses for them to bring them into the room to have a conversation about violence in general um, and, and started to talk more about more intimate partner violence, child sexual abuse, which often drops off the agenda, um, and exploitation through prostitution. Um, so that continued. They discovered that um, for women there was issues of confidence, particularly intimate violence, um, coming forward or defending yourself, and so therefore the confidence building courses were designed. Um, we've we've returned um, this this the last couple of years actually have been hugely significant I think for women's personal safety in the UK um, and we now have a strong focus again on personal safety and part of that is because of our consultation with women we know that women do now have the language some communities struggle with that a wee bit more than others so where maybe they're new to Scotland it might be they don't quite understand what we mean by these terms or maybe women with learning disabilities don't have the same language that um, other communities have. Um, so we continue to do um, our courses and events. But what we know is that women do know, they often know where they can report, but their sense of protection and their sense of support is limited. Um, so we're doing a lot of consultation with women and trying to get them into decision-making rooms so that they can be part of the decisions that are being made. Um, and that they can, their experiences can be reflected in strategic work and policy work as well. Um, so what from we, we've done a very similar thing to Angela and we, we've been talking over the last year and a half, myself and Angela, um, and we've done a, 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 a women's safety app where women could go in and they could um, contribute to a survey where they experience public harassment and abuse. I'll, I'll send you the link for the report on that, but Angela, it definitely reflected Angela in Edinburgh's experience. Um, but from there, we've started to move forward further and we're now uh, establishing a project called Safer Steps, um, which is working to allow women to assess particular areas of risk or how they're feeling safety-wise in Glasgow in general. Can we go on to the next slide, please? Um, and part of the reason that we're doing this is because there continues to be a lack, a sense, a lack of sense of safety for women, as well as an actual physical uh, safety issue. Um, so the UN has recognised this, as well as um, uh, the UK and Scotland, Scottish governments, and where we're seeing a lot of change for the climate crisis. It's really important that women are involved in those discussions about how that moves forward. For example, in our survey, um, women spoke about experiencing public harassment and abuse in taxi ranks um, and now those taxi, the length of time taxi ranks is extended due to a reduction of taxis on the street and no real change in public transport in general to mitigate against the impact of that. So women are having to stand longer in areas where they experience quite a lot of abuse. So it's about getting women, um, as Angela was saying, into positions where they can influence the changes that are coming and have to come um, but without that um, um, further implicating their, um, their, their safety. Can we go on to the next slide, please? Um, so we come from a background of um, history of, of women's safety, um, and it's been pretty consistent, unfortunately. Um, male perpetrators tend to remain invisible, so we tend to come from a perspective of women's individual needs. So what support needs to needs to they have? What are the individual women's experience um, of safety or, or otherwise in, in the communities? Um, we have to start making male perpetrators more visible. And I think what Angela's talking about, a campaign round about male attitude is really good. We, we tried to run a survey with men to identify where they witnessed uh, public harassment and abuse of women, and it just wasn't picked up. Um, we couldn't get the publicity out. 
we could get um, some of the larger institutions to engage with it. So we, we get very, very few uh, feedback from that. Um, we really need a campaign round about um, cultural change um, as, alongside the uh, women's influence over changes, physical changes in the city. We know the numbers continue to increase in violence against women um, and partly that's about COVID. Uh, we know that COVID has had a huge impact um, and at the bottom we've put the links between violence against women and crisis um, or reduction in, in protection. Where we have a crisis, where we have conflict, we know that this increases women's risk of uh, violence and abuse. Um, so during COVID, that, that's what happened. It exacerbated the inequalities that already existed and we've seen an increase in women reporting violence and abuse. But part of the challenge as well is also the consistent low conviction rates um, and the limited protection that women are able to access and how they access that as well. So unfortunately, we're still in this period where we really have to think about how do we increase those conviction rates and how do we uh, reduce the numbers of women that are having to come forward. Some of that's historical experiences of violence and abuse, but what we see in the violence against women sector and specialist services is increasing numbers. Um, and also if you add into that um, abuse through social media, we have increased ways that perpetrators can abuse women and children. So we know that these numbers are going up. Um, services and campaigns have traditionally targeted women's actions to prevent violence. Um, this is along the same lines as Angela's talking about. We can change our cities as much as we want. As we want. If men are intent on abusing women, um, it's going to happen. Um, and it's the same with this. If, if we focus only on women, women have a right to have to get the information about how they protect themselves and how they can um, live in the world. Until men desist and, and be violent towards women, they have to live in those environments. So they need that information. But we should also be looking at um, that cultural attitude towards um, women and um, how how they can what their their rights are in, in society. Um, can we go on to the next slide, please? Because this is a human rights issue, and we know we know this. Um, but Article One says all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights, and violence against women is an absolute affront to dignity. Um, there is no way um, that we can say that we are. Um, um, endorsing this or right, signing up to this when actually so many women um, are experiencing violence on an intimate level. Extremely difficult. Um, many of the women in the survey we've done spoke about feeling trapped um, and we would say that that's, that's against their right to live free from torture. Um, what was really worrying was 32% of women reported feeling unsafe in Glasgow in general, but 39% felt um, unsafe in the area they lived. Um, and that's huge, huge numbers. Um, so it's it's unacceptable that women are having to face this every single day. Um, and one of the other statistics I wanted to raise as well was 41% reported not going out alone after dark. Now, when we go into areas like right to work, right to education, right to wellbeing, right to participate in cultural life, all of these days, we live in Scotland, but dark for most of the winter. Um, so how women actually interact in their communities is, is limited by this fear and this reality of violence and abuse. Um, and also we have a situation where women have responsibilities for unpaid caring, who tend to be the majority of paid carers in the city. Um, we also have women have responsibilities and we've seen that over COVID where retail and entertainment and the nighttime industries were significant for women when those started to close down. We know that women are highly represented in these areas. They are having to go out at night. So to have to go out at a time in a place where you feel unsafe is, is unacceptable for, for, uh, for our communities. If we go on to the next slide, please. Um, wise women are extremely um, conscious of our responsibility under the Equality Act 2010. And we have a responsibility um, for a public se sector duty responsibility. We're funded through Glasgow City Council. So we want to ensure that we are promoting our um, responsibilities. We want to make sure that women's um, experience is, is considered and responded to. Um, and I think as well, it's, it's to, for it to be visible, for people to actually see what's going on, because there is a feeling at the moment that although we are discussing these issues, that fundamental, the fundamental issue of male violence against women 
it's kind of missed off the agenda a bit. And 16 days is a great time to raise that. So it's fantastic we're here. Can we go on to the next slide, please? So Wise Women also supports an organisation called Glasgow Women's Voluntary Sector Network. And they oversee events and um, in, in Glasgow. Um, but also they have, over COVID, they've been invited onto and have uh, found themselves on, shall we say, rather than forced themselves on, um, onto some uh, strategic groups in the city. So they now represent women's voices in four different strategic groups in Glasgow. And we're hoping to increase that. And Glasgow has been very supportive of that, which is, is exciting. One of the key things for us is that women have been talking about their lived experience for a long time now. And we feel as though that women have to be in the decision making rooms because it shouldn't be about taking in lived experience and then deciding which one's relevant. All lived experience in, in terms of violence against women has to be considered. And we find that that's not really happening. So if women are in the room, they've got a better chance of influencing it positively. We've also created Safer Steps, and that's been established at the moment. Um, and this is safety tours for women. So women go out into sites where there's they feel as if there's a risk to women's safety, or it's been highlighted um, as areas where there's been abuse perpetrated. Um, and we're working across sectors, which is, is really, really interesting for us. Um, we've been working with Balfour Beatty in the new Stoplefield Bridge site in, in the north of Glasgow. We're working with Police Scotland to look at an area where we are seeing high levels of exploitation through prostitution. Um, we're working with Historic Environment Scotland, which is fantastic. They're looking at their sites and how they can best represent women's experience of violence um, across the ages, uh, which is just so exciting. Um, we're also, we've been called in by a local councillor to look at a park where there's been sexual assault against a number of young women. And, and we will be providing online confidence building for the young women affected by that as well. So we're combining the, the two areas of the service. And also we are, um, we, because the survey, there was a low level of women in Putin who came from a disabled background. We had done a focus group with a project called Possibilities in Glasgow. And one of the women raised there, Sucky Hall Street in Glasgow, was really challenging. That had already been raised in the survey. So we'll be doing a, a safety survey up up in that area as well. And I think during uh, post COVID as well, this is so important because a lot of decision makers are no longer in the city. A lot of decision makers are having to stay at home um, and aren't back in the office yet. And for example, somebody I was speaking to recently who's a fantastic worker was saying to me how she was really glad that there was no rough sleeping in Glasgow anymore. And I was saying, well, when I'm coming into work in the morning, that is not what I'm seeing. So I think that disconnect between decision makers and the community is quite alarming after post-COVID. And we recognise that this is a situation that probably is going to continue for a while. Um, so we really want to ensure that women get to influence and get their stories across to um, to um, decision makers in a way that can help them to make the, the decisions that we know that they want to make, they want to make positive decisions for the community. So it's really trying to, to, to marry that up and make sure that that's heard and, and we can move forward positively. Um, I think one of the other areas I just wanted to highlight was uh, one of the things that women spoke about was public transport, all forms of public transport, bus, train and taxi. Um, and one of the challenges we've had in Glasgow is that when often when um, safety on public transport is raised, People talk about going to hate crime department or organisation or whatever. Um, women aren't included in the hate crime and we've consistently said this. Now, this, this public transport strategy came out and although it was referenced to violence against women, um, the statistics weren't there. So it's really just to flag that up so that we're conscious that if we do not collect clear data, we will not be able to progress positively. So it's really trying to highlight that as an area where we really need to make sure that that's on the agenda. And I see that Angela in Edinburgh is doing that, which is fantastic. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? Um, we really, really want to promote women's voices. I'll send a link to the interim report we've done. There'll be another report released in February that will finalise that project. And then we're moving to a continuous ongoing survey um, that will be available on the app. So I'll send that information through with the PowerPoint. Um, but this was two examples. Um, 
what the first women spoke spoke about Queen's Park. Now Queen's Park it was raised a law and that was partly due, it was, it was being raised in a survey about a murder that had happened a number of years before. So women sense the security, their sense that anything's changed is, is affecting their ability to use areas in Glasgow. Um, and also as it's an extremely dark park and, and we're doing Glasgow's doing work on that just now. But as Angela says, this is more than lighting and it has to be these physical changes alongside cultural change um, through uh, awareness raising and, and um, uh, conviction rates as well. And finally, the, 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 um, the quote on uh, public transport. And ironically, we, we were at a meeting the other day and um, there was a man there who was talking about a woman who had approached him on a train. She had texted the number on the train because she was being harassed. No one had got back to her. And then he came up and he said, I've just uh, been on the phone for 40 minutes trying to get through to whoever that was relevant to the trains. Um, and I can't get through to anybody to report this. So I think what we have to be clear on as well is that if we're going to put safety measures in, if we say we're doing something and women have got that expectation, we have to make sure it works. For example, the, the work we're doing with the councillor, we were in a park, there was an emergency button and the three of us were standing looking at it, should we push it? We pushed it, there was nobody at the other side. So if you're a woman who's trying to get away from someone and you go in that direction because you know that exists and then you press it and there's no one there, it doesn't help. So any decisions that are made have to be maintained and must be working at point of contact. And just the last slide, please. So if, I'm happy to, to stay for questions, um, but um, if there's anybody who wants to get in contact with us, please contact um, contact me at this number um, and um, hopefully we can work on this together. But thank you so much.